scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The power of God works like money, currency. If you have a hundred naira, a hundred naira might be able to buy you a bottle of water. A hundred naira might be able to buy you something small or let's say a thousand naira might be able to buy you a bottle of water but a thousand naira might not be able to buy you a car a thousand naira might not be able to pay for a house rent or buy you a house so if it is a house you are looking for or a car you are looking for in this example you will need multiples of that amount to match the amount that can buy you that house it is true that every house you are looking for is available or can be built depending on the amount of financial empowerment in this example those there are people in our world who are called very wealthy people why are they wealthy they are wealthy first because of their mindset and they are wealthy because of their understanding of the laws and the systems that govern finances but more importantly pragmatically speaking they are wealthy because they have the financial wherewithal is that true to be able to afford living the kind and the level of life that suits them and so a man can decide for instance that he wants to build a house in his village he wants to decide or he can decide that he wants to buy a house in Europe buy a house in America and at the instance of his decision if he has the requisite level of financial empowerment that man can go and pick it up in this example I'm giving but there's someone who may look and say, I desire a greater house. Say I'm staying in a two-bedroom flat. I desire to move to, say, a four-bedroom flat to afford greater comfort, you know, and stability for my family. That person has the desire and the house he wants to move to is there. But the financial requirement to promote that person from where he is to the place of desire is not there. Man of God, you are trusting God for increase, increase in revelation, increase in impact, increase in membership. The desire is there and that possibility is there. The word of God tells us that that possibility is there. However, do you have the empowerment enough to produce that outcome? Apostle, I desire for men to favor me, men to stand like the gentleman who just spoke one person at the field meeting one destiny helper and his life changed he's found himself now in europe playing and being paid in foreign currencies is what god can do but the requisite level of power do not downplay the ministry of power it is what sponsors the actualization of all desires all desires all desires with no exception if you meet some of the wealthy people today in our nation, extremely wealthy people, um, they can sit down and discuss that we want to build a house for someone and get architects and say in two months or in three months or in four months, I want this house built. And while they are talking, the architects listen to them because they know that there are no limitations. The intellectual power is already there and the financial wherewithal is there. There should be no limitation whatsoever. Can I tell you, it's dangerous and frustrating to know what should be, but not have the power to make it happen. Hmm. 
I know my life should change. But the power to make it happen is not there. I know destiny helpers can come to me. But the power to make it happen is not there. I know I can be free from the influence of this wicked spirit that keep programming bad luck to my life. But the power is not there. Tonight God has come to place power upon your desire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Back to my example. So if I meet a gentleman who now says, I want to build a house maybe for my parents i love them i have the desire i have even gone as far as meeting an architect here is the plan i even have gone as far as having a land a plot of land or some plots of land but it's just the financial empowerment in this example imagine that a man looks at that gentleman and signs him a check or does him a transfer of 50 million naira right there and then what has he given him the ability to turn his dreams to reality now that gentleman can rejoice a few minutes ago he was stranded a few minutes at the instance of a transfer from a wealthy man remember the transfer has to be from the person who has it the transfer cannot be from the person who does not have it from the person who has it to the person who needs it and then that man will receive it and call the architects and by the very next day they start digging and building within a few months you see a beautiful structure at the instance of empowerment whatever is stopping you from going forward whatever is making you keep repeating prayer requests you write again you write again you write again may the power of the holy spirit bring that issue to an end now in the name of jesus christ please sit down again in this side of the world we experience sadly periodic blackouts is that true whether your gadget is new or not once there is no power it is as good as dead your fridge your electronics all other gadgets are at the mercy of the power that flows to the voltage required so there are times that people can go 24 hours sadly sometimes 48 hours and there's no blink of light except you have an alternative system and sometimes if you have a generator and your generator is small you have to off certain things to allow it stand is that true the size and the voltage matters so if you want a generator that can power everything in your house you get some technician to calculate for you the total voltage needed and then you go and get a generator that is by far more than the voltage now you can own everything and run the generator from morning till night there are times you own a generator that can only take one television you add any other thing it will shout outside and stop are we together And yet in the midst of that darkness there are people and there are homes that have never had light blink once in this city in this nation there are regions that have never seen a blackout in fact there are children that if there is a ever a blackout they will run away because they wonder what suddenly happened within the same region there was light in Goshen and there was darkness in Egypt The difference is power the difference is power everything God says and everything God desires for the believer has a requisite level of power or empowerment to make it happen I define here the power of God as an ability that causes you to get results the power of God is the ability that causes you to get results the the ability that translates dreams and desires to their manifestation this is very important you cannot imagine what happens in your life 
where certain dimensions of God's power comes upon you and their possibilities begin to manifest in your life. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I believe in results. I truly believe in results as consolations to our Christian experience. I have taught you here about loving Jesus and giving him everything and loving him beyond things. And that remains true. But let me tell you something. Nobody will be indefinitely committed to anything and anyone without an advantage that you derive from that person. Is that true? Yes, sir. Even for our relationship with Jesus Christ, he didn't just give us this illusion, you just serve me and continue. There are benefits. The psalmist said, bless the Lord, O my soul. Help me, please. And forget not his benefits. There are benefits. I know you love Nigeria. I know you love the government. But when you go to work at the end of the month, you, you don't, no matter what, it's not just thank you, your boss will tell you. There is a salary that is a measure of your value or the, at, at least the ability of the corporation to reward you. And then they give you something. You go back rejoicing. There are preachers who go to preach. We go to preach because we love Jesus. But at the end of it, people will package something small and say, thank you for coming. There are consolations and there are benefits to serving and knowing God. And if you have not received yours, it must land on you this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Apostle, I love God for who he is. Congratulations, that's a good foundation. But a foundation alone does not produce a house. You need a foundation and a proper building. People sometimes don't even see the foundation. You can't renovate a foundation. A foundation remains strong there. But you need to build something on it. People will not live on the foundation. It's the building. People need to see tokens, consolations to your Christian experience. I'm getting your spirit fired up to be angry with your current level. So that when we arise to pray, you must cry like Jabez and say, Lord, change my story. Nothing will change for as long as you forbear with your current level. Everybody shout results. Shout it again. Shout results. One genuine result in the Bible. One genuine result. In Acts chapter 3, they saw the man at Gate Beautiful. And Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But such as I have, give I unto you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The Bible says the man got up and walked. In Acts chapter 4, they had to summon them because the ripple effect of that result, he went all over the town and they called them. And when the man went, Peter went with his testimony standing by him. And while he was speaking, the result was there. Shout it again. Say result. Your evangelism is powerful if your result is standing with you. Your advancement is powerful if your result is standing with you. And now while well, I went to, I, I prayed preparing for this miracle service. I always will pray and ask the Lord for the area of focus. I don't just want to carelessly come and waste your time. You know, I've told you, I love you and I honor you and I respect you too much to just arrive and come and say, let's pray. No, I must pray and say, Lord, what do you desire for your people to have? Because his power goes where his word goes. So if you don't find out where his word is going, you cannot find where his power is. And the Lord told me specifically these two areas. First Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 12. Someone's life is about to change. Read it as loud as you can. Ready? One to read. Both riches and honor come from you and thou reignest over all. And in thy hand is power and might. In thy hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Where does riches and honor come from? Can I tell you, it is possible to have riches and not have honor. What does it mean to have honor? 
to have honor means to be regarded and to be rewarded to match your true worth if honor is not at work in your life you will be underestimated and undervalued are we together the perception that people have about you will not match the true perception because solomon had honor when the queen of sheba came to him and she saw everything she said half of this was not told me keep that scripture there please 29 12 both riches and honor come from you and thou reignest over them it says in your hand is power and might how many of you believe in prosperity don't feel bad if you don't believe that's all right how many of you believe it is the will of god to prosper you how many of you believe you can do more for the kingdom in the presence of abundance even though some of you the way you are you will backslide when god blesses you but that's why you are in church we are here to help you but how many of you believe in all fairness that many issues in your life will come to a a a an end with full stop in front of it when god solves your problem financially how many of you agree that most of what you have written in your prayer request now is largely finances How many of you are honest and will not lie? <laughs> you see, Ba, my dear people, listen to me. This issue of finance, no matter what else goes forward in your life, if you are down financially, I assure you by the God of heaven, you will be limited in a way that will annoy you forever. Are we together now every time we talk about finances I, I i've told you this that there are two schools of thoughts there are people who are just carnally minded and their their entire scope the scope of their idea about finances is just fueling the lust of the flesh no this is not what we are teaching we are people of intention and mission we know that every time god places resources in your hands it provides the platform for the betterment of your own life and the advancement of your king the, his kingdom we've taken our time to discuss that it is important for you to know the role that the presence and the availability of financial resources can bring to your life there are needless troubles there are needless battles there are needless health concerns there are some of you we keep praying for you all the time because it's not a medical condition what is happening to your health is a reaction of something not all right with your finances I vowed a vow before God I've taught you here that I will never never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant and then they lack the resources to be able to help them make progress I believe in influence I believe in God coming through for his people I know what it means to be in a state of limitation compromise is easy when you are in the presence of financial limitation let me repeat compromise is very easy when there's financial limitation in your life there are preachers bleeding and crying today simply because of financial resources there are many people who are even more anointed than the joshua selman's greater across but the financial resources that will help them amplify what god has given them is not there there are books that people have within their spirit that can bring revelation to the body of Christ and help us solve areas of ignorance in our spiritual work, but simply because they are limited. You've heard me say the name of Jesus is very heavy. It takes financial resources to lift it up. It takes more than desire. If you must lift up the name of Jesus to the nations, Don't let anyone bring you to a point where you downplay the importance of being empowered financially. Believe me, you may act, pretend. Some of you, the reason why the teaching on finances or 
teachings miracle services like this a call to receive this empowerment it doesn't mean much to you is because someone else is giving you from his harvest you've not been exposed to seeing what a have or a lack of harvest from your carelessness of not sowing somebody can bring a harvest and share with you and so every time they say receive you say no because there is an uncle somewhere i can run to it takes financial resources to bring glory to the name of the lord and i tell you for as long as your heart is open something will come upon your life tonight it says both riches and honor come from you that it is within your power to make great Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 17 Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God which teacheth thee to profit and leadeth thee by the way that you should go. God, listen carefully, God not a job, God not a business, God not an investment. I've taught you here, the foundational law that governs the activation of the blessing of God upon a man's life is that you must come to a point where you acknowledge that all blessings come from God. Blessings don't come from your job, please hear me. Blessings don't come from the investment you are involved with, not kingdom blessings. Blessings does not come from your real estate or whatever it is you are involved with. The challenge with many believers, and that's the reason why we are not able to see the power of God, is that our minds are on the vehicles and the platforms that help us to prosper, not the one who gives the prosperity. The vehicles are only profitable to you when God has authorized it to come to you. Are we together now? It is very important. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. He said the watchmen watch it but in vain. It is vain to wake up in the morning early and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow. Please look at me listen to what i'm teaching you tonight a life of hustling and running from pillar to post just depending on a job or depending on a business or depending on some investment to empower you you can become your investment can work well for you and one sickness can destroy an investment of 10 years within one month one arm robber can come and attack you and collect everything you have labored for it is the blessing of the lord that make it rich let me drum it again to our spirits respectfully ladies and gentlemen do not look at people who are not of faith and say after all they don't love god everybody must bow to something spiritual for authentic and lasting wealth to come let me repeat it just because you were not there when they were bowing does not mean they did not bow. It is impossible to rise beyond a certain threshold of wealth. See, there are levels of wealth when you get to bar. It's not goods and services you sell again. <clears throat> it is your allegiance and your fraternity with the spirit that continues your journey from that point ask any wealthy man some of you here god has granted you the privilege to be millionaires and billionaires you know i'm not lying this away with all that talk that just makes you ignore spirituality out and just believe that it was just brain work if you are convinced that it's only your brain work that took you so far keep watching there are results that men cannot get there are results that businesses alone cannot produce. There are financial results that investments alone cannot produce. There are results that businesses and jobs alone cannot produce. God's desire tonight is to purify your heart, to realign your understanding, and then to release something genuine upon your life. 
that you will see changes in your life you will know can i tell you this i want you to make up your mind and believe that god is able to empower you the spirit that makes you have to sit down and wait for others to be blessed for you to eat i cause that spirit this night <laughs> hallelujah because you see when it has to do with the grace of god everybody can partake of it is that true give us acts chapter 4 and verse 33 let me show you something the Bible says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord. Read the remaining part, please. And great grace was upon how many? Great grace was upon them all. There are certain giftings of the Spirit. You will say he gave some. But when it has to do his, with his increasing and his empowerment, it's in everyone's destiny in Christ. Great grace was upon them all. Now let's talk for a few minutes about greatness and we'll begin to pray. Because God spoke to me. Most of you have not paid attention to the subject of greatness, nor have we been taught the necessity. Greatness is very powerful. To 2019 or 2020, I think, around the period of my birthday, usually I would take out time to just pray and ask the Lord, to give me a prophetic word for the next season of my life and God gave me this scripture and there was a striking difference striking difference between those two three years of my life striking difference Psalm 71 and verse 21 please read it as a prophetic word to your life ready one to read thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. One more time. For the last time. What does it mean to be great? To be great means to increase in size. To be great means to increase in size. To be great means to expand beyond your current level to expand beyond your current level to be great means to be beyond the ordinary or to be beyond average to increase in size to expand beyond your current level to be great means to be beyond the ordinary or average when you are above and beyond the ordinary when you are above average, you are great. What does it mean to be great? To be great means to be important and to be distinguished. That's what it means to be great. To be given a perception of importance and to be distinguished. And the Bible tells us that it is in every believer's destiny in Christ to be great. Greatness is not privy to a group of preachers, a group of businessmen, a group of politicians, a group of professionals. In Christ, everyone is destined for greatness. God's servant, Bishop David Oedeko, will say that there are no low callings in Christ. That everyone has been ordained by God for a high calling. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2 now the lord had said unto abraham get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that i will show you let's read verse 2 together ready one to read and i will make of thee a great nation uh-huh and i will bless thee uh-huh and i will make thy name great thou shalt be a blessing just stop there what does it mean to be great to be great means to rise to a level where your life perpetually becomes and remains a blessing write it down to be great means to rise to a point to rise to a point in life and destiny where you can become and remain a blessing in the kingdom we measure greatness not just by how high you rise 
but how massive your impact and your contribution as far as being a blessing is concerned to be able to rise to a point where you can become and remain a blessing he said i will make a great nation of you genesis chapter 17 and verse 6 a blessing and a prophetic word that God gave Abraham and I will make thee exceeding fruitful he says and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of you do you believe this please hear me everyone at the sound of my voice I don't care how you arrived here by reason of natural descent I don't care how the things and the happenings around your life the kinds and levels and the frequency of failure around your life I'm announcing to you at this miracle service that God still um, destines for you to be great to rise to a point where you listen 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 let me tell you something about greatness greatness is also measured by the degree to which your personal goals have been satisfied that you can now turn and focus on lifting others and being a blessing provided you are still at a realm of meeting your needs and trying to make ends meet you are not great are you getting what i'm telling you now that god desires believers that we rise to a point where god would have sorted us left right and center and now you can have the privilege and the convenience to use your influence your intelligence the anointing of god upon your life and then your resources to now begin to reveal jesus to many around you that's greatness unfortunately not many people are ever able to rise to that level because at best most people keep scrounging around the base of destiny fighting with one another in petty jealousy not knowing that everyone has been destined for a glorious life in christ it doesn't matter what background you came from listen carefully it doesn't matter what has worked or what has not worked in your life male or female old or young there is there is potential for greatness in everyone you know we live in a world where it looks like god particularly hand pick a few people in ministry and pick a few people in business and pick a few people in politics and then the remaining keep cheering and admiring no that can't be god can i tell you this if all of us in this auditorium and around become great in christ is still will not interrupt anything as far as our personal results are concerned do you agree with me question if god grants you the grace to build your house does it affect my house if god grants you the grace to take your children to good schools does it affect any other person no the idea that just a few people should stand out and the rest keep sharing like like a flock like animals is not a it's a very wrong perception about god the Bible says great grace was upon every one of them. We have a heritage of greatness in Christ. But can I tell you this? It takes the empowerment of the spirit. It takes the empowerment of the spirit to lift people. Like we read in that scripture. It is God that makes great. If God does not lift you, you cannot be lifted. Listen, even principles don't just work on their own. It is the power of God that empowers principles to walk. Principles on their own don't just walk. There is a force from the realm of the spirit that empowers principles. I like to give examples with cooking. Many of us here are good in the kitchen. As you cut your ingredients and mix this and mix that according to the principles, usually that pot is kept on fire. Is that true? something is happening under while you are adding the ingredients most of the foods that we eat require fire require cooking to assume the states that we want more than just adherence to principles you must encounter the power that makes for performance 
can i tell you a majority of what god is going to be doing tonight is empowerment empowerment just placing something on your life placing something on your destiny for some of you adding to what you already have because the validity of what you have is exhausted it's clear in your life now that you have stretched and it is enough more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life more love more love more power Man of God, you can have a thousand sermons. You need the power of God to produce results. Genuine results. Can I tell you this? With all due respect, I can tell you sincerely, human beings are not stupid. Nobody will come and gather and sit down to listen to you if they know you don't have anything to offer. Human beings are not idiots. They will not shut their shops, leave their homes, take the risk, fly from one nation to the other. Who do you think you are without the power of God? But when that power is there, to the degree that is needed. To the degree that is needed. To the degree that is needed. Please look up. In Africa and in Nigeria, there are markets that are designated for certain things. Is that true? There's what we call in Abuja here, fish market. Which other one do we have? We have all kinds of markets that focus on certain things. You cannot go to a fish market looking for material, clothes. You most likely may not find it there. But there are malls that they will tell you this is home for everything almost everything you are looking for they call it a one-stop shop for everything for as long as you step in there you go to large malls like dubai malls you can step in there and literally the only thing i'm sure they don't sell there are human beings anything at all people took out time to intelligently make sure that everything is there when you become like that mall you see that so the sick know that if I come, there is something for me. Those who say, I am not sick, but is there still a place for me? My life is not going forward. There is still something for them. All men seek for you. You must trust God for an encounter with power. Let's stop making noise, giving explanations, wasting, help those under the anointing, wasting the time of God's people. It takes power. It takes power. To turn dreams to reality it takes power to bring healing to the sick every testimony that you see here is a product of power the prophecy upon your life is power dependent for its manifestation man of God you must desire the power of God genuine empowerment sincerity of heart is good but it's not enough Don't be like the fig tree that has green leaves and yet no figs. What kind of power are you receiving tonight? Number one, the power to get wealth. There is such a thing as the power to get wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee the power some version said the ability to produce wealth the power to get wealth listen there are ideas that produce wealth there is your value that you turn to products and services and sell it to a targeted consumer base to produce wealth but there is the power to prosper The power to get wealth. 
most people have not encountered the power to get wealth most people have ideas that produce wealth most people have skills that produce wealth but you are like that fridge with no light you are like a television that can show different channels but no light more than your skills and beyond your skills it takes the power of the holy spirit why am i telling you this because this is what is going to land on your life this night <laughs> apostle i have a shop but no customers what is wrong absence of power not absence of products there are clearly products there and it is true that your products are needed there are more than enough people for someone to come there but it takes power The gentleman who said he had a dream he had been building and it got to i think zinking or somewhere lintel level and it stopped there for a long time the spirit that brings you close to it and yet you never truly actualize it the power to get wealth god is able to bring power God is able to increase people and then let me tell you this one of the assignments of the power to get wealth number one it is a supernatural empowerment that comes upon you and it will draw people it will draw opportunities and it will draw resources to you but you see the power to get wealth is also the power that opens your eyes to see there is a relationship between prosperity and your sight. Hear what I'm telling you. I want to reveal a mystery for you. If your eye is blind, you will be poor. It says, lift up your eyes and see. As far as your eyes can see. Isaiah 45 verse 3. Isaiah 45 verse 3. Tonight's miracle service was made for you. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. Question. There are treasures. But the problem is that they are in a place where there is no light. How do you now know that they are there? If you do not have the power to see, you can pass it and not know. If I drop a bundle of money here, cash, and I off the light and make sure this place is dark, you can keep pushing it as many times and yet not see. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which calleth thee by name, I am the God of Israel, the treasures of darkness. Do you know why God put darkness there? So that no one else will see it until the person appointed the treasures of darkness. Some of you, by reason of this impartation, you will pass a land you have been looking every day. And this time around, you say, I'm seeing something that no one else is seeing. Every major business today you see, believe me when I tell you, it was a treasure in darkness. It was always there but the eyes to see the eyes to see the eyes to see the eyes to see if your eye is blind you will stand and weary yourself at the gates of prosperity and not be able to see can I tell you if everybody is seeing what you are seeing they can't reward you for it there is nothing unique when everybody is seeing. You can't clap for me for seeing what you are seeing. No, but if I am seeing what you are not seeing and I can bring it out and make it visible to you, then you have to reward me for reaching into darkness with that light. The power to prosper can place something on your destiny and you start seeing in a desert, you will see an oasis there because the veil has been taken away from your eyes. Please listen to me. Most of us continue to pass wealth every day, but because of the blindness of our sight, you can sit down and with the eyes to see, God can reveal secrets to you. And in one moment, look at that gentleman, for God's sake, 
he found out that nothing else was working in his life didn't go to school didn't do anything and he just felt lord what will i what can i do and he went to the field do you know there are many football fields he would have gone to the one where his destiny helper is not he would still be playing football but it takes the eyes to see listen when i pray this prayer you will know who to not relate with and who to relate with because there is jonah and there is jesus beware of who is on your boat don't carry jonah in the in a bit to look for jesus listen carefully you need the seeing eyes businessmen listen to me without the seeing eyes everything looks like white from a distance it's until it comes close you say ah no this is black the seeing eyes satan always comes as an angel of light there are some of you the financial troubles you got into in your life is because of blindness you thought it was this and found out it was not the power to prosper corrects your vision so that you are able to see why am i taking out time to tell you this so that when we start praying you don't just fall and stand for nothing you know what you are receiving the financial testimonies that will arise from tonight's miracle service will bring glory to the name of the lord can i tell you this hear me i'm saying this prophetically you will hear testimonies of nobodies people who as they are standing here they are still surprised by themselves say what has brought me to this realm products of prophecy Do you believe what I'm telling you? Yes, sir. The power to prosper. Man of God, listen to me. If you have the power to heal and the power to do all of these things, if there is no power to prosper on your ministry, you are going to compromise. It's only a matter of time. I assure you, no matter how much a man of integrity you are, the bills of ministry will squeeze you to a point where you will get into things that are not godly. There are many people who started well, but financial pressure pushed them. Remember, I've taught you the scripture. Every time there is hunger, Israel will go to Egypt to look for food. When Satan wants to take you to Egypt, he uses hunger. Because when there is hunger, you will leave the place of covenant and promise to a place of compromise in search for food. Many people have sold their hands today. You see all these are young people who are doing money rituals all around some of those boys were born from christian families don't downplay the hunger of people to feel like their life is making meaning nobody will sit down and keep growing older and their lives at least financially is not making meaning they will join groups they will join all kinds of things somebody needs to arise oh somebody needs to arise you you need to be angry you need to be angry you need to be angry angry at your current level in one minute just pray in the spirit i will see continue but just pray in one minute in the spirit in the name of jesus hallelujah hear me brothers and sisters remember sir isaac newton taught us that anybody will remain in a state of rest or uniform motion it will remain there for as long as it is kept there except compelled by an external force to act otherwise that means your destiny will remain where it is until a force from heaven comes to push it listen i came tonight as a prophetic midwife to tell you where you have stand is enough it's enough it's time for you to move for god's sake it is enough in the name of jesus christ
rise from these ashes it's time for you to fly like the eagle that you are Micah 2 10 give it to us please ah. Micah chapter 2 and verse 10 this is a prophetic word for someone it just came to my spirit now read it from the depth of your heart are you ready one to read arise ye and depart for this is not your rest because it is polluted it shall destroy you even with a sword destruction if you remain at that level it will destroy you arise it is not your rest this is not your place you are an eagle stop dwelling around with chickens in the name of jesus open your mouth and pray this scripture in one minute lord i arise i arise it's time to arise this is not my rest i arise i depart from this level i arise in the name of jesus spiritually i arise financially i arise as touching the greatness that you have placed upon my spirit i arise someone pray this is not my rest this is not my rest i refuse to settle for less man of god pray thank god for what god has done so find your ministry but this is not your rest evangelist pray this is not your rest prophet pray politician pray this is not your rest professional pray this is not your rest please pray this is a miracle service You have prayed yourself to a new level. This is not my rest. In business, this is not my rest. As touching the call of God, what I saw in my vision is yet to happen physically. I will give him no rest because this is not my rest financially this is not your rest listen listen look up everybody what does it take to live where you are to the next level on the part of God power on your part anger and hunger two things anger and hunger are required ingredients to break through your current season if you are not angry enough you will remain there giving excuses and if you are not hungry enough you cannot be filled man of god you will remain at that level of the anointing praying for 100 people and having only one person getting healed it won't work that way the nations won't place a demand upon you that way that is the honest truth professional uh -uh. not at that level someone is going to pray father i am tired of this level i am both angry at this level thank you for this level but lord i know that i am overdue when a baby stays more than nine months in his mother's womb he calls for concern when a baby stays in his mother's womb if it is before nine months that's fine the baby has to be patient but above nine months doctors will tell us there is a problem lift your voice and pray
bring a performance oh god at another level bring a performance in ministry bring a performance in family bring a performance in my finances bring a performance in my destiny empowerment from heaven the grace that turns dreams to their reality outside are you praying inside are you praying Power of the Holy Ghost coming upon your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen. When God answers your prayer, how does He answer it? By giving you power. God answers prayer. By sending power the power that turns that desire to its reality now listen I'm going to pray on your prayer request but before I start ministry you are going to pray on it by yourself and declare that Lord in this season this and that and that make your request known as you pray please do not keep quiet And don't say God cannot do it all. Don't entertain unbelief. You don't have to lift it up. Even if it's written somewhere, you just begin to pray. Mention everything by name. Father, it is within your power to make great. It is within your power to prosper. It is within your power to lift. Someone pray. hallelujah please hear me listen carefully please in the name of jesus can i tell you i know definite times in my life where certain levels of empowerment came and i knew the change when we started this work you see and i say this with every sense of responsibility and humility as at the time this work started this thing called the power to get wealth was not there. There were ideas. I was reading materials and learning because I knew that doing ministry with integrity will need resources. And I didn't want to go around inconveniencing people every day. God's people will give, but church can't be about money every time. And then you can't be demanding money from people and not release the grace that empowers them. Do you know, let me tell you, when the anointing of god rests upon people who truly love you and they are blessed you don't even have to ask them for anything they will be too grateful to live they will never allow you to beg for tea and bread not with them there are people who have the hearts to give listen something is about to fall here right now that's why i wanted to listen i remember praying and studying i had learned principles and a day came, I had to study the life of Abraham, David, and study these people. I said, I found a missing link. I was already anointed though. But just because you have, the anointing is not like a general purpose tool. Uh -uh. The anointing is assignment specific. The anointing for prosperity will not bring healing. No. 
their allocations are different you can have a first aid box with many drugs they are all called drugs you cannot carry the drug for high blood pressure and swallow it for headache you are causing trouble the design they are all drugs you go to a doctor a professional and he will diagnose you oh you have malaria he will give you the drugs for malaria even if you have malaria and another sickness most times doctors will choose which one to treat first when you are fine they will change the drug and treat the other thing many of you have received many impartations you can know the one that is missing this night don't keep quiet but as far as god spoke to me oh, this issue of the power to prosper i've done teachings on prosperity many of you have given but i want you to be angry know that god is able to help men you are Ebenezer ah. You are Ebenezer This I know about the helper of man You are Ebenezer You are Ebenezer Listen You are Ebenezer the lifter of men you are Ebenezer God can help men stop struggling alone you are Ebenezer I remember praying and crying to God and say Lord this work is enormous the apostolic and the prophetic ministry requires a lot let this grace for God's sake come upon my life and also come upon this vision the power to prosper can be on you as a man of God and not be on your ministry you will prosper while the ministry suffers the power to prosper can be on the ministry and not on you the ministry will prosper and leave you to suffer and you will start compromising can I tell you this when that grace came with all due respect and honor to Jesus I knew it has come to stay the Bible says listen it says on the day of Pentecost all of a sudden they saw what looked like cloven tongues and it came and rested or sat it didn't visit and go back there are graces that can sit and rest on you when it stays on you that is it I submit to you with all humility every devil and every principality from hell knows that this is a ministry God has helped The ministry is not the building the ministry is you and you must answer that name this night in the name of Jesus Christ it does not matter what spirit of poverty has tied down people in your family you saw people educated to PhD but they could not build a single house that is a wicked spirit when your level of intellectual investment does not match your financial rewards something is wrong with that equation and then number two we are going to pray that god will move us do you know let me tell you this any sincere man of god who loves his people your greatest joy is not your personal testimony if someone buys me a car today or buys me a plane or builds me a house thank God for all of that but that is not really the testimony I'll come and share here my greatest joy today is to sit down and hear people saying I came from a family with nothing serving idols and now I am on fire for Jesus loving Jesus and see what God has done that's right now that's a testimony you must be a wicked leader to rejoice over your results as above and against the people God has sent you to. The real joy of a leader is not his personal testimony. But to know that God's people are growing in leaps and bounds. Can I tell you, man of God, this may be a secret for you to learn. When there are genuine testimonies, not stage managed, not exaggerated. 
genuine workings of God's power in your ministry, it is impossible for that ministry to be empty. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land, a higher place than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. The last prayer, and then it will be a very quick one in this place tonight. Father, I vow that as you cause me to be great, it will not distract my work with you. Rather, it will give me an opportunity to serve your purposes. Lift up your voice and pray that sincere prayer. Someone is praying. Pray and let my God surprise you tonight. Pray and let the one who backs us up surprise you tonight. Lord, that my greatness will not be an interruption to my spiritual life. It will not be an interruption to my love and my fire for you. That is usually the condition. If the nations will see him through your greatness, if the nations will know him through your greatness, then there is no limit to what he can do. If that greatness will not bring pride, arrogance. Hallelujah. I wish I had the liberty to share some of my testimonies. But sometimes we live in a world where people misunderstand everything men of God say. Once you say A, people will say you said A to Z. And it, it turns out to not even edify people again. But I will tell you one or two. Listen carefully. I remember a time when a real estate company came and met me and they said, sir, God gave us an instruction that everywhere on earth we build an estate that will build a house for you. It's our covenant with God. Anywhere on earth across the globe, for as long as this company exists, just know that anywhere you see us building an estate, I don't know how many estates they have built now across the world. If, if you tell me the power to prosper does not work, think again. Hallelujah. I remember a company of wealthy people who came and met me and said, Apostle, God said we should make you a non-executive board member of this company. What for? What do you people do? This and that and that and that. This is the instruction God gave. So what will be my contribution to your company? That spiritual advantage. You represent the ark of God to our business. I'm sorry, yo. I'm sorry. You see, this is why sometimes some, it's good to say certain things to just help you know that the man standing before you here is not talking nonsense. Let me tell you, if you think this is just a preacher's talk motivating you, think again. I submit to you with all humility what it takes to run koinon, one koinonia service is what many people may use for conferences. Believe me when I tell you. What it takes to run one koinonia service. You've never seen anybody come here to cry, to manipulate, to say this and that. You see, when God sends a word to Jacob, he lights upon Israel. We are not the inventors of these things. We also received it from the carriers. He said, go to them that sell and buy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our world today only wants people to brag. Once you are bragging and making noise, doing a lot of things, aha. Uh -huh. But once you are modest and humble and you live your life with modesty, sometimes we say these things not to attract conflict.
that every devil in hell knows that till Jesus comes, this ministry will not know poverty. Just believe me when I tell you. No, 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 no. It's not a prayer point. I'm telling you what has happened. It will only be from glory to glory. It's not pride. Please, I'm sorry if it looks like I'm arrogant. I'm only describing for you what must start happening in your life from this night. <laughs> Apostle, I'm coming from a background where nobody knows me. Apostle, right now, as I'm standing here, I'm in debt of one billion, 500 million. Fine rest. You are not the first to get into debt. Please. There are people who have been into debt of billions of dollars and God brought them out. Find rest. Can I tell you, for anyone who is owing here, business is not what you use to solve debt. Prophecy. Go and read your Bible. Every time you are in debt, let me save you trouble. It's not doing another business that will bring you out. It is the power of prophecy. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you do what you do. We need a move. Hallelujah. At the count of three, we are going to pray. In fact, please, my people, hold your hands. Let me start with you people. This is my dear leaders. Look at me. In the name of Jesus, may this power to prosper come on you. Take that place right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I release you to strange dimensions of prosperity and increase that people will arise and begin to help you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, in the name of Jesus, be shifted to a new level, mysterious dimensions of kingdom wealth, even by the power of God. Now I decree and declare, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. Please bring those under the anointing. Some of you come from families where nobody has risen. My God is about to lift you. Are you ready now? Father, may this anointing, this man to come upon your people. Please bring them out. At the count of three. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Bring them out, please. Take that grace now. I lift you by prophecy. From where you are, I shift you to a new season. Please help those, my God. Please, whether you are an usher or not, just help the ushers. We have to hurry up now. Someone's life is changing. I don't care what financial situation. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, such as I have, give I unto you. Step into a new season of prosperity. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, you are changing my life. Changing my story. Please bring them out very quickly. Let's hurry up. If you can, as many as you can. If you can't bring them out, that's alright. But we have to hurry up. Someone pray. Don't wait till you fall under the anointing. Open your mouth and begin to pray. A renaissance of financial possibilities. From your lowly estate, my God is lifting you. Hallelujah. Where's Jimmy? Please arrange for him to come and sing that song, The Lifter of Men. Just the chorus. David, damn you help. Whether it's a guitar or whatever. If the keyboardist cannot play, let someone help him very quickly, please. Please bring them out quickly.
bring them out my god something is breaking out here outside inside those following from any nation the power of god to lift and to prosper is resting upon you Hear me. Hear me. Some of you, by reason of this anointing, I'm seeing at least 13 people. At least 13 people. At least 13 people. Your destiny is not even in this country. This is what I'm seeing as God is showing me. Right now, that anointing is going to come upon you. Don't ask me how it will happen. Parande shekete balata. I relocate you now by prophecy. Go to your place of prophecy. Go to your place of destiny. I pick you up from where you are. The land where you must prosper. May my God take you there now. May my God take you there now. not here i'm saying it again anyone here whichever nation and whichever region where your prosperity is tied i shift you by prophecy go to that region now i release you let the limitations leave you now can i tell you this it is a dangerous thing to be in a place and there are people who are watching me you are outside this nation but your destiny is in this nation you are roaming around across the globe and finding out that even when you go to a place of plenty there is no peace because you must be in your assigned place i relocate you back to your place of assignment hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs, it says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart from thy eyes, and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well, that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us Thank you.